In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to deal with some common problems that can occur when you're both writing and running subroutines. You'll need a copy of the file that we've been working on over the previous few parts of this lesson, and you can either download a copy using the link at the top of the page, or just use the version that you have been working on yourself. I'm going to open up the one that I've downloaded using the link, and because I've downloaded it, I'm going to need to click the Enable Content button to allow me to run the code. I can then head to the Developer tab and choose the Visual Basic Editor. And if necessary, I can double click the Module 1 item to open up the module and see the code contained in it. The first type of problem that you're likely to encounter in VBA is referred to as a syntax error. Syntax errors get flagged as you're writing your code, and they tend to be caused by mistakes in the punctuation or the structure of a sentence. We can quickly and easily demonstrate a syntax error by editing one of the existing lines of code in this subroutine. So I'm going to pick the line that changes the value of cell A1. I'm going to start by removing one of the double quotes from around the cell reference in the range object. And then to trigger the syntax checker, I simply need to click on any other line of code in this subroutine. If I do that, I'll see a couple of clear indications that there's a problem with that line. First of all, the font color turns red. And also, by default, you'll see a pop-up message appearing trying to describe what the problem is. These pop-up messages don't always highlight the exact problem. The one that's uh, highlighted here is it's, it says it's expecting a list separator, which is a fancy way to describe a comma, or a closed parenthesis. And neither of those two problems are actually the cause of this syntax error. So I'm going to click OK. I have to click OK because I can't edit the code until this message has been cleared. And then if I fix the problem by re-entering the double quote, I can then click onto another line to check that the, uh, the syntax is now correct. Now, the pop-up messages which accompany a syntax error aren't often the most helpful things in the world. So if you prefer, you can disable those pop-ups. To do this, head to the Tools menu at the top of the Visual Basic Editor, and then choose Options. And on the Editor tab of the dialog box, find the box that's says Auto Syntax Check, and simply uncheck it, and then click OK. The next time you make a syntax error, so just to demonstrate a point, let's make the same mistake we made earlier. I'm going to remove the double quote from after cell A1, or range A1, and then click onto another line to trigger the syntax checker. This time you can see that the font color has turned red, but no silly pop-up message appears, so I can just immediately identify the problem that I've caused and fix it. Syntax errors are very easy to spot because the Visual Basic Editor highlights them almost immediately. Another type of problem you're likely to encounter, but is less easy to spot, is called a compile error. A compile error can be caused for a variety of reasons. We'll demonstrate one in just a moment. Ordinarily, you do see a compile error highlighted when you choose to run a subroutine, but you can also check for them earlier by choosing to compile the project. To do that at any point, you can go to the Debug menu at the top of the Visual Basic Editor and choose Compile VBA Project. This will check for compile errors in every module of the current project. So if I do that, we'll be pretty safe because I know there are no compile errors because we've successfully run this subroutine already. Let's now demonstrate what a compile error looks like. Let's pretend, just for the moment, that I've forgotten how to add a worksheet to the worksheets collection. Let's pretend that I thought I used the insert method to do this rather than the add method. Now, the problem with the insert method is that the, the insert method does exist in VBA's vocabulary. So you can see that I've typed in the word insert with a lowercase i, and if I move to another line of code, you can see that it automatically capitalizes that keyword. So it definitely exists as part of VBA's vocabulary. The problem is that I can't apply the insert method to the worksheets collection in order to add a new worksheet. So this means that if I go to the debug menu at the top of the screen and choose Compile VBA Project, it will immediately flag up that there's a problem here. This would also have occurred if I chose to run, run my subroutine, um, but this allows me to check for the problem earlier. I'll need to click OK on the message, and then to fix the problem, I'll need to apply the correct method to add a worksheet to the worksheets collection. I can then choose to compile the project again by going to the debug menu and choosing Compile. And this time, I don't see any warnings. In practice, you tend not to bother checking for compile errors separately, because they'll be flagged up automatically when you choose to run a subroutine anyway. The final type of error you're likely to encounter when working with VBA is referred to as a runtime error. And as the name suggests, that's a problem that occurs when your program is actually running. 
Runtime errors can occur for a huge variety of different reasons, some of which might not even be your fault. So everyone encountered runtime errors, don't worry if you see one. Let's demonstrate how a runtime error uh, appears on screen to an end user. Let's make a deliberate mistake with the range A1 statement here. I'm going to change the number one to a lowercase letter L, which looks very, very similar when you're writing your code. It's quite difficult to spot that that isn't a number one, that that's a lowercase L. There's no syntax error that occurs. You can see the line hasn't flagged up in red. If I go to the debug menu and choose to compile my project, I don't have any compile errors either. But if I choose to run my subroutine by either clicking the button or pressing F5 or choosing run, run sub user form, when the program is running, I see a runtime error dialog box. I could choose to just end the subroutine at this point and try to highlight, try to find where the error is in my subroutine. But when the subroutine is hundreds of lines of code long, that can be really, really awkward. So a more useful button to press is the debug button. If I click debug, you'll see that the line that has caused the problem is highlighted in yellow with a little yellow arrow pointing to the left of it. From there, I can work out what the problem actually is by carefully picking through the line of code and then working out that that isn't actually the number one as I intended to type. That's actually a lowercase l. So I can delete the letter l and replace that with the number one. Now you'll see that the little yellow arrow is still visible on the left hand side. If I click onto a different line, the entire line will again be highlighted in yellow. So what this indicates is that your program is halfway through running. It's just paused on this line. So it's already achieved the method that adds new worksheet. You might be able to make this out in the Project Explorer here, in fact. I've got a couple of choices now for what I can do. I can just choose to continue running the subroutine from this point, and I can do that in the same way that I chose to run it in the first place, either by clicking the Run button up here, or by clicking the Run menu and choosing Continue, and pre or pressing F5. Alternatively, I can choose to reset the subroutine, i.e. stop it where it currently is, so that I can run it again from the start. If I choose the Reset option here, that will stop the subroutine. I could also choose the Reset button on the toolbar. I'm just going to choose to continue running my subroutine from this point by clicking the Run button, or the Continue button as it is now called. And I should find now that my subroutine reaches the end successfully. I can switch back into Excel just to check that that's happened, so I've got my new worksheet with all the details in place. So at this point, your code is now error free. So you're welcome to continue with the extra practice session on this page, which allows you to practice with both creating and solving syntax errors, compile errors, and runtime errors. Once you're happy with that, you can move on to the next lesson in this module, which will explain a variety of techniques used for debugging your code.